welcome to my channel, Random Andy's channel, where I talk about movies and give movie reviews and talk about top tens and everything in between. Welcome to my video of every movie I have ever seen in my life, uh, the 1930s to the 1940s. If you're new here, I appreciate you being here. And uh, if you're a returning subscriber, I appreciate you as well. Uh, give this a like, a share, a comment down below of the films that you've seen from the 1930s to the 1940s. And uh, give me some of your favorites and some of your least favorites. Uh, let's get into the video. Starting off in the early 1930s, we got All Quiet on the Western Front, a Best Picture nominee film, uh, a war film. It's uh, absolutely brilliant. Uh, then we have Alfred Hitchcock's Juno and the Paycock, uh, pretty great little thriller. And then we have Murder, another Alfred Hitchcock film. Uh, and then we have Abraham Lincoln. We have the Marx Brothers uh, Animal Crackers, and then we have the great f uh, gangster f flick uh, Little Caesar, uh, starring Edward G. Robinson and uh, James Cagney. Great little gangster film. And then we have the fantastic film City Lights, directed and starring Charlie Chaplin, an absolutely beautiful romantic film. It's one of the greats. I highly recommend this. It's There's some beautiful shots in here and there's a ton of uh, uh, comedic uh, jokes and all that kind of stuff. It is fantastic. Uh, and then we have the original Dracula um, starring Bela Lugosi. I highly recommend w watching this at least once because it is obviously the original and nothing comes close to this uh, film. And then we have Taboo and then we have the great gangster film, The Public Enemy, starring James Cagney, another just fantastic, great gangster film, along with uh, the Goodfellas and Casino and all those other great gangster flicks. And then we have uh, Peter Lohr's M, directed by Fritz Lang. And then we have the Marx Brothers' Monkey Business, and then we have Platinum Blonde. Up next is the classic Frankenstein, the original one. Uh, I highly recommend this as well, just like I recommend Dracula. It's uh, worth watching and uh, f absolutely classic. It's fantastic. And then we have another version of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. If you remember me talking about the other one in uh, the 1920s to the 1930s, uh, You'll know that I've seen multiple Dr. Jekylls and Mr. Hyde's. It's uh, pretty cool how they uh, keep going with these films. So, And then we have the original Mummy from 1932. Um, this is also starring Bela Lugosi, who also played Dracula. Um, it's uh, f fantastic. Uh, better than Tom Cruise's Mummy, Mummy but, you know, I know everybody loves Brendan Fraser's. You no, know, everybody loves... Brendan Fraser's Dracula movies, and those are good, but this is the best one. And then we have a nice little film called Freaks, uh, basically about a circus with uh, small people. A great little film talking about the struggles and whatever of these uh, guys. It's amazing. And then we have, from 1932, Tarzan the Ape Man. And then we have the original Scarface. Uh, a lot of you know the film from uh, well, from Al Pacino. Um, this is the original, and uh, I highly recommend it. So worth watching. It's so good. And then we have the Marx Brothers uh, Horse Feathers, and then we have Buster Keaton Speak Easily. Up next is Douglas Fairbanks Mr. Robinson Crusoe, uh, the most dangerous game. Trouble in Paradise, Island of Lost Souls, eh, these few these last films, eh, they're okay. And then we have a beautiful, fantastic uh, musical for, called 42nd Street. It's one of the early ones, and there's a lot of beautiful shots in this. It's pretty incredible for 1933. Um, and then we have King Kong, the original one from 1933. I've, I think this is the one that I grew up on, um, and... It's 
absolutely fantastic. It's scary. It's the uh, effects are incredible, and it's uh, I would say it's on par with the 2005 version of Peter Jackson's King Kong, which is also another film I love. Then we have Gold Diggers of 1933, and then we have Boris Korloff's The Goal. And then we have the original The Invisible Man, which a lot of you are probably very familiar with last year's The Invisible Man, which is also an incredible film. But this one, this one is actually pretty incredible for its time, and I highly recommend this. And then we have another Marx Brothers film, Duck Soup, probably their best film. It's uh, pretty hilarious. And then we have the first main iteration of Little Women, starring Katherine Hepburn. And probably, this is probably my second favorite of the four iterations, which I'm a huge fan of the 2019 version. And then we have the sequel to King Kong, Son of Kong, which is not as good. It's okay, it's fine for what it is, but it's not memorable. It's worth watching once. And then we have one of my favorite romantic comedies of all time, It Happened One Night with Clark Gable. And it's simply a beautiful little film. And then we have Manhattan Melodrama. Then we have The Thin Man, Our Daily Bread. And then we have John Wayne's The Star Packer, which this is probably one of the earliest films of his that I have seen. And he is very young. Then we have Shirley Temple's Bright Eyes. I mean, what can I say? It's a Shirley Temple film. And then we have The Bride of Frankenstein, the sequel to uh, Frankenstein. And then we have The 39 Steps, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, another great Hitchcock film that I highly recommend. Then we have Boris Korloff's The Black Room, uh, Fred Astaire's and Ginger Rogers' uh, most iconic film, Top Hat, uh, and uh, I'm sure you film buffs have seen, you know, the uh, famous images of them dancing and all that kind of stuff, and if you have not seen that, I highly recommend it. It's uh, worth watching. And then we have A Night at the Opera. And then we have A Mutiny on the Bounty, uh, one of my favorite films I saw for the first time from last year. Uh, this film is amazing. I highly recommend it. It has one of the, probably the, one of the greatest villains of all time. It stars Clark Gable. It's uh, an incredible film. And then we have Scrooge. We have Captain Blood. An Errol Flynn film who is a uh, one of my favorite uh, movie stars of all time and then we have Modern Times by Charlie Chaplin it's I there's no words I can really say of how simply incredible and amazing and just beautiful Charlie Chaplin's films are and Modern Times is simply amazing then we have H.G. Wells's Things to Come we have Showboat, we have Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire again in Swing Time, then we have My Man Godfrey, we have Sabotage, then we have the original A Star is Born. Um, this is probably my, of the four iterations that I've seen, and uh, there are four, um, and this is the first Probably this is my second favorite of the four. It's uh, such a great little film. It's uh, what started all the other uh, A Star Is Born films. And then we have Make Way for Tomorrow. We have Grand Illusion. And then Marx Brothers' A Day at the Races. Um, some of their films are okay, in my opinion. This one's one of their okay films. It's just... Hey, you know, some of the humor just doesn't land for me, but hey, it's, it is what it is. Other people love the humor. I love the humor, but, you know, sometimes there's just some of those that just, the humor doesn't land for me. And then we have Shirley Temple's Heidi. Then we have Cary Grant's The Awful Truth. Manhattan Merry-Go-Round. Uh, then we have the very first full-length animated feature from Disney, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I grew up on this film a lot because <laughs> I have five sisters and, you know, grew up with a lot of these films. And so it's uh, kind of nostalgia for me. So this is 
a really good movie. And then we have uh, Catherine Hepburn and Cary Grant in Bringing Up Baby. Then we have one of my personal favorites, uh, and probably the best iteration of Robin Hood, The Adventures of Robin Hood, starring Errol Flynn. Uh, this is one of my top 100 movies. Oh, it's so good. It's such a great swashbuckler. And then we have Alfred Hitchcock's The Lady Vanishes. Shirley Temple's Just Around the Corner. We have Angels with Dirty Faces, another great gangster flick with uh, James Cagney. And then Stagecoach, uh, one of the uh, earliest films from John Wayne. And uh, I know uh, this is a very great Western, and this also is probably has one of the best, greatest uh, chase sequences in film of all time. And if you have not seen this, I highly recommend it. And then we have The Little Princess starring Shirley Temple. Jamaica Inn, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> Can you tell I am a Alfred Hitchcock fan? <laughs> and then we have Cary Grant's Only Angels Have Wings. We have Young Mr. Lincoln, which is another top 100 of mine. I am a huge fan of Henry Fonda. And he does a great job as uh, Abraham Lincoln. And I'm a huge fan of the genre of courtroom dramas and this is f absolutely beautiful there's a monologue in here that just I absolutely love would love to memorize it's a great great uh, beautiful um, film and then we have the rules of the game and then obviously we got the Wizard of Oz which how can you not go on with uh, watching this film it's if you haven't seen this you gotta watch it it's uh, starring Julie Garland and uh, directed by Victor Fleming uh, and this musical is just timeless. It's, uh, if you have not seen it, go see it. It's great. And then we have Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. This film was ahead of its time, especially with the media. Like, James Stewart is incredible, and the way the media is portrayed here, it's like, the media has been the same since <laughs> the beginning of it, and it's just like, holy cow. There's so many similarities from media today to media to then. It is just simply incredible. Then we have Marx Brothers at the Circus. Gulliver's Travels, another early animated film. And then we have The Great Epic, also directed by Victor Fleming, who also directed with The Wizard of Oz, uh, Gone with the Wind. This film is like almost four hours long, and it stars Clark Gable. And Vivian Leigh and this film is just absolutely epic and beautiful. It's uh, so many great shots and uh, there's a sequence in here uh, where the, a town is completely on fire and it's like, well, how did they do that? And I highly recommend this film. It's uh, one movie that I am definitely going to be doing a movie review for. It's amazing. And then we have another iteration of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And finally, for the 1930s to the 1940s, we have Of Mice and Men, the original one. Starring Burgess Meredith, who probably we all know as Mickey from uh, the Rocky series. And uh, this film is just beautiful. And the bit my... And that concludes my video of the 1930s to the 1940s of every film I've ever seen. And I uh, thank you for being here. If you are new here, I appreciate it. And I would love it if you uh, click the like button as well as possibly subscribing if you thought this was worth uh, checking out and uh, worth subscribing for. As well as uh, maybe even commenting down below what you thought of the video and hey, Maybe there's some uh, movies that you uh, heard for the first time and want to see. And uh, if you're a returning subscriber as well, comment down below as well and tell me what movies now that you want to see or if you are putting them in your watch list or tell me what movies that, hey, that you would uh, like to hear a movie review of or just basically anything. I appreciate you guys being here. Stay random, guys.